I've been making stop motion animations for over a decade now. I started on this YouTube channel in 2012. In all that time, I haven't really gone through my process how I make my videos, so consider this a very basic outlook in my workflow. If this video is well received, I'm willing to go more in depth regarding certain elements. Concept slash writing. Coming up with ideas for videos is something that's kind of just hard to explain. It just kind of happens. You just gotta wait for the inspiration to strike. If the video isn't a recreation, the writing process is pretty difficult. I'm not usually satisfied with a script on its first draft and typically keep tweaking it until it's about right. If you want to become better at writing your scripts, make sure to study tons of your favorite movies and TV shows and just analyze why you love the writing in it so much. Also, practice makes perfect when it comes down to all of this, so don't be afraid to make something bad. Just keep making stuff for the experience. Pre-production My pre-production process is not usually that complicated. When you're pretty much a one-man crew with full creative control, I don't really need a storyboard as it's all in my head. When I do commission work, however, I do provide storyboards as someone needs to approve the concept. Typically the biggest thing about pre-production is just making sure I have the right figures I need and the sets. As soon as I have everything, I'm usually ready to go on production. Production. Alright, so what's arguably the most important part of making a stop motion is just taking the pictures itself. For my main lighting, I use these two smart light desk lamps. I got them around 6-7 to seven years ago and they still work. However, they're a bit pricey and most of the lamps you probably have will work out anyways. It doesn't really have to be anything fancy. You're working with such a small set to light most of the time that you can get away with one lamp as your main source of light. I have a lot of small other lights that are LEDs that switch colors to give some pizzazz to your film as well. But a very important thing that most of you have is a phone. Use a flashlight on your phone to create a backlight or fill light as they call it to spice up your lighting. It always makes it look more cinematic and when there's other sources of light and usually iPhone flashlights or anything along the lines of that work well. You can find different colored LED bulbs on Amazon for about like $10 or so for some more fancier colored lighting. They aren't the best quality, but they work out. For my camera, I use a Canon Rebel T6 with the animation software Dragon Frame. Here are my usual settings I use. I also sometimes use a webcam for certain shots. It helps out if I ever need more dynamic camera movement, or it's just more compact in general so I can fit in entire spots. Here's a comparison of how my usual camera looks to the webcam. It's a little worse in quality, but still more than good enough if you can't afford a DSLR. There's also an option of using your phone with a program called Stop Motion Studio Pro. A big thing to keep in mind is try to put some effort in composing your shots and having different camera angles. Here's a small list of them, but again, studying your favorite media and seeing different shots they do is a good thing to try to replicate. So then I load up Dragon Frame and I begin to animate. Getting better at animation requires a lot of practice and a fundamental understanding of movement. A technique very common in animation is called easing in and easing out. Basically what it means is you start your movement very slowly, then progress to a faster speed, and when the movement's about to end, you ease it out and slow it down. Obviously it's not that simple, since some things need to go at faster speeds while others need to go at slower speeds. It's all about balancing and finding the right amount of frames you need. Post-production. I enjoy editing the most out of the whole process as you really bring the animation to life. I use Sony Vegas Pro 16 for editing. I start by dragging all the pictures in. It's important to make sure your editing software is set to your exact frame rate that you use for animating. Mine is 15 frames per second. From there on, I go on and add all the voices I need, as well as adding sound effects from free libraries online. For mouth animation, I draw three frames of the mouth getting bigger on a transparent PNG layer. Then afterwards, I sync them up to the voices. If there's ever any more complex editing, I use After Effects. The shots I'm showing on screen were done with it. All in all, that's pretty much about it. If you want more behind the scenes type of videos covering a specific topic, please leave it down below.